lovely bookworms welcome back to another video as you can see this is my favorites for this month um march <laughs> i keep forgetting what the month is i have got categories now changing it up a bit keeping it fresh um start with the books obviously it's what you're here for um secondly we have things that i've enjoyed watching this month and then the third we have got snacks <laughs> so let's crack on with the books i've got four favorites of the month i think i read about 16 um i think four favorites um i'll start in the order that i read them let me just arrange the first one i dedicated a video to so you already know that i enjoyed it um is the beast the goldfinch um, I've already talked about this enough, so I won't really say anything more, but I felt like it had to have a place in my favourites just because the time that I took with it and I did enjoy it, so that's, that's why it's here. But yeah, um, second up is James Acaster's Classic Scrapes. This was just the exact perfect amount of um, <laughs> bizarre, random, funny little kind of tidbits that i needed and wanted um this i just loved every single page of it it was hilarious it's if you're a fan of his comedy then you'll be a fan of this book it's just oh it's so funny i can't wait to reread it already um i could just hear him saying it as i was reading it and i just loved it i find him hilarious anyway i just love him to bits it's so funny um next up we have surrogate um susan spindler this um is a debut um kind of family let and i know i know not the best <laughs> not the nicest of covers really I, it always makes you wonder when they have meetings about front covers of books and there was like a i mean no you know no uh no shade or whatever but a meeting full of people or however many you know back and forth i'm thinking it's family drama it's you know surrogacy and a mother and daughter and it's kind of you know all that kind of sensitive subjects and that what should we put on the front cover oh um i don't even know what it is is it a fig i don't know yeah we'll just have like an open fig that looks like um that <laughs> anyway um that aside i thought this was brilliant this is exactly the type of book that i could imagine being like an itv drama or a bbc drama on the tv um just really really great i really loved the writing i thought it was brilliant i got into it straight away the pacing is solid all the way through um the characters aren't particularly likable but i think for it it didn't really need that i, I didn't want kind of hoping that someone would kind of win my heart and i'd want to root for them and as such but throw okay cups um as a whole it just really worked for me i just really enjoyed it i think every now and then there's a kind of really good um, standout kind of family drama that has the kind of emotional elements as well that kind of just pops up out of nowhere um, and this was very kindly sent from the publisher who asked me if I wanted a copy um, in exchange for a review and I'm really glad they did because I don't know if I would have found it otherwise you know what I mean like ones like that are just kind of special little gems that you either get an email about or you know a publisher approaches you or you just find through scrolling and then randomly discover it and enjoy it. Um, I just thought it was really, really good. I, it is emotional. It's obviously on a very sensitive subject, um, kind of infertility, um, miscarriage. So if you're not comfortable reading about those subjects, absolutely would avoid. <laughs> um, it's, yeah, it tackles stuff like that. So you, if you don't wanna read about that, then don't read this. But if you're comfortable reading about that and that doesn't affect you kind of um, in a negative way, then I would highly recommend this one. I think it was a really enjoyable, really well-paced, um, emotional, family-led, family-focused drama. <laughs> um, and last but not least, <laughs> just chuck it across the room. Um, <laughs> Acts of Dis Desperation by Megan Nolan. And this was a pre-order that I got from Waterstones as I was scrolling through new releases. This one popped up, really liked the sound of it, went for it. And actually the only thing that sold me was this little, I'll just read it to you really, really quick. And this is basically, um, I'll just tell you what it's about really quick, focusing on a toxic relationship kind of throughout 
its entirety. It's between two, kind of imagine um, the book Normal People, the two main characters, um, kind of thrown in with, I don't know, yeah, kind of that, but like upper level and yeah, like a not good relationship, but kind of more emotionally led, I would say, because I didn't like normal people. Anyway, um, so it focuses on that. Um, it looks at love, dating, um, and kind of just life in general, but I just, the writing was beautiful. It, let me just read you this tiny little, tiny little bit. Um, right, my need was greater than reality, stronger than the truth, more savage than either of us would eventually bear. How could it be true that a woman like me could need a man's love to feel like a person, to feel like I was worthy of life? And what would happen if I finally wore him down and took it? I read that and I was just like, I need this book. <laughs> so I got it and I loved it. Um, it's, I think in my review on Bookstagram, I kind of, Pend it as like a fly on the wall look at a really toxic relationship. Um, there's parts of it, like I couldn't put it down. Once I started it, I just couldn't put it down. I kept wanting, like when I put it down again, I was like just looking forward to the next time I could sit and delve in a little bit more, see what was gonna happen. Um, and I love books like that, that just kind of grab you for whatever reason. And obviously it's not a happy book, so it wasn't, that it was full, filled with laughs and I was enjoying the kind of feeling that it gave me when I read it. But it was kind of just the, I don't know, it had something really like addictive about it and that was just what sold me on it. Um, so yeah, obviously due to its themes and the kind of abuse focus, um, I wouldn't obviously recommend it to just anybody. You'll know if that'll be your cup of tea, if you'll be comfortable reading that or not. Um, so just, yeah, bear that in mind. But just for the fact that it was beautifully written and it's a debut as well, I think it was a fantastic debut book. Um, I can't wait to see what that also brings out next. So that is my four favorite books um, that I really enjoyed this month. I had a bit of a funny month reading wise. I don't know if you did as well, but I had a lot of three star reads. Um, I had one DNF, I had another one that I, <laughs> nearly DNF'd um, that were just disappointing and not like I thought and then the rest of it was just kind of middle of the road good you know kind of take it or leave it reads really and um, these four were obviously my favourites of the month I did have a few other four star reads but yeah I don't know it was a bit of a weird month and it felt like it went on <laughs> like I felt like I read The Goldfinch ages ago and then it was only the beginning of the month which feels bizarre and in one way, like I was saying yesterday to my parents and that, I feel like time is going so quickly considering we're not going out and we're not doing anything. I don't understand how the days are going by so quickly that, I don't know if you feel like that, but it feels like Christmas was just hardly any time, a whack, like time, what's the word? Like it felt like it was last month, Christmas. So I don't get how time is going so quickly, seeing as we're just trapped. Anyway, <laughs> um, TV this month that I have been enjoying. Now, The Return of Line of Duty, love it. Um, as I record this, the second episode has just been on, on Sunday, um, which is really, really good. I see it did get quite slagging off though in the papers and online, because a lot of people said it was really boring for a season opener, which, I can understand why because normally it opens with a bit of a bang and there's kind of a bit more excitement to it um for this series it feels like it's more kind of talky <laughs> and a bit more kind of laying the grounds for other stuff that's to come um which i think it will have more of an explosive middle and end as opposed to going in like full force um <laughs> full. but i really enjoyed it i really love having it back and it's just nice um it's on a Sunday night, which I love Sundays anyway. It just feels like it kind of rounds off the day really nicely. Um, and I've loved every season of Line of Duty. If you're watching this and you've never watched an episode of Line of Duty, it's all, I believe, on the BBC iPlayer and Netflix as well. So if you've got access to either of those, I highly recommend it. It's a really good police drama. Um, really, really good. Each season, there's a new kind of celebrity playing the new character. Um, normally they're a wrong one, but not always. <laughs> and it, it's just really good, like really, really good. Um, what else? And Unforgotten, that Sunday just passed, um, was 
I think the final episode in the series, yeah, um, and that ended on an emotional <laughs> shocker, um, but that's another really good kind of British um, police investigative drama. If you haven't seen that, really recommend that one as well. Um, as far as I know, that is on Netflix as well, seasons one, two, and three. Season four, the series that's just finished, is on the ITV player to watch. Um, if you fancy that. So those two dramas, very good. Um, MasterChef, UK MasterChef, really enjoy that. I have watched not every series of MasterChef, but I've watched quite a lot of them and the celebrity ones as well I enjoy. Um, that's going on, that's really good. That's coming up to the, I think, semi-finals. Um, yeah, this week, that's always good. I love watching people cook. <laughs> um, and I really just like, I think Greg Wallace is, um, quite funny um yeah I just really like it and um Great British Bake Off stand up to cancer that's been going on every week there's been a new batch of celebrities baking for a good cause um yeah that's really enjoyable as well it's really funny uh what else tv wise um we've been watching um on a Saturday night uh the wall <laughs> which is bbc one um presented by danny dyer um it, it's really funny i think um it's just quite a fun kind of saturday night you know game show thing to watch um i know it's like season three now but we've just been watching some of them um the end bit especially is, is really good what else i feel really been watching that much telly to be honest um first date hotel and first dates um really enjoy that um i feel like that's it um me and mum obviously i did put on my uh bookstagram before that we had worked our way through game of thrones um it was my second time watching it all which was really great to re-watch it it just kind of made me appreciate it kind of a whole lot more as well and mum really enjoyed it which just made my heart happy because it was one of my favorites and she really loved it um so we watched all six seasons no six eight however many seasons can't remember um kind of binged all that we'd watch kind of two episodes per day um yeah and we got through all that now we are currently making our way through Downton Abbey I brought mum this for Christmas maybe last year or even the year before um the whole box set seasons one to six and also we've got the film over there that I brought as well um oh i love it so much we both absolutely adore this we are about to um start season six which is the final series and then at the end of each series um there is like a feature length hour and a half ish episode um which is really really good where they kind of go somewhere else and then we've got the film to watch afterwards just can't wait um this reminds me of back when i was like school days on a sunday night um they would watch kind of antique roadshow and then we would watch um heartbeat and kind of like where the heart is and stuff like that on itv i don't know if any anyone watching this if you used to watch those programs you'll know um it kind of always signified like the winding down of a weekend and then like school would be coming on monday but just like the coziness of it like heartbeat and stuff like that this is what it reminds me of obviously miles different the storyline obviously but the kind of coziness and the wholesome factor this has it like oh just perfect the writing the characters the storylines the music the costumes the scenery <laughs> just everything tick to tick absolutely adore it um yeah i just it's just perfect <laughs> it's just perfect so we're really loving that so that's definitely got other mention um yeah i don't want it to end and then finally a very important um section now on my bookstagram i do like to post about snacks that i've been enjoying or things that i have brought new to try from good old lidl um which is our local supermarket which we go to once or twice a week um and i love just finding new things but recently ladies and gents i went to tesco's <laughs> now obviously i've been to tesco's many many times but to go to a different supermarket from your usual um, during these times, let me tell you, that is a whole nother level of excitement. So what did I get? And these three things are three favourite snacks of the moment. I go through phases, but these are the things that are just really, really floating my boat. We've got the giant Watsits. Now, 
a normal what's it is is fine but a giant what's it that's just another league um me and my mum <laughs> firm favorites with the uh giant what's it now i don't really i'm not really like a fan of normal crisps i like kind of stuff like this or um mini cheddars pringles and stuff like that but i don't really like just normal crisps and i only have <laughs> Um, like salted so ready salted plain flavor or cheese or very occasionally um, like kind of barbecue but I'm, I'm very particular um, so anyway the giant what's it big success and proper chips sea salt lentil chips now in Lidl I got the lentil crisps um, it was a new thing for me a new thing they had in there really really liked them and then in Tesco's I'd seen this back uh, proper chips I think they do um, is it popcorn proper I don't know. Anyway, saw these, very excited. Um, tried them, very, very nice. So those two are the kind of savoury snacks that I'm really enjoying at the minute. And then kind of childhood, bit of nostalgia, nostalgia um, little flashback. Who doesn't love a penguin? And this 12 pack, no, 21 pack, excuse me, was only two pound. Um, and just to have a penguin with a cup of tea each day is delicious. Um, these are just lovely. <laughs> taste i'm very like i'm very easily pleased like anyone can just get me a penguin or one of these bags of crisps that cost literally a pound and i'm made up <laughs> so that is my um picks for snacks so yeah that's my roundup of my march favorites um i hope you enjoy me including the little extra bits as well just like to chat about things that i like um and i will do so each month as it changes so yeah, um, let me know if you have read any of those books and enjoyed, or you might have already told me on Bookstagram. Um, and yeah, <laughs> and if you have any recommendations for TV shows that me and mum might like um, that are similar to Downton Abbey, if you know, uh, yeah, <laughs> let me know. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Uh, please look after yourself, treat yourself well as always. Um, and I will see you in a couple of days for another video. Bye. <laughs>